Hey guys, welcome back to the garden. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how I string my trellises um, for my climbing plants. Uh, I do lots of different kinds of trellises. Sometimes I use bamboo. Sometimes I use actual like um, metal or wood trellises. But for anything delicate like peas or flowers, I like to just use string trellis. Like it's quick, it's easy, and you can do a lot of different patterns with it. So yeah, and it's cheap like literally this is just one dollar craft twine from the Dollar Tree so and this lasts probably a good one to two years before it starts to dry and fall off um, and by then usually you know I want to change up the plant in my garden anyway so I'm not looking for anything too permanent because I like to change things so often um, and this string as you can see was from two seasons ago and it's actually still pretty strong like if I really tug on it, it'll break, but no plant is gonna do that to it. So this probably would have been fine, but there was a few weak spots in it. So I just went ahead and cut it off and I'm restringing the whole thing. So I thought that I would bring you guys along and show you how I do that. And I'll also show you um, some examples of other places in the garden where I have a different type of string pattern. Um, and a lot of this, it's not necessarily for function more so than I just wanted a different look and how the plants would climb up so any pattern will work fine as long as they have something close enough to grab onto so let's go ahead and do a quick video on how I do this okay so as you can see I have already done this portion and I am starting on this portion going up to the top of this archway this is actually just a um actually a wedding archway like for people to get married under or put flowers under or whatever it's not even meant for outdoors or the garden but my mom was getting rid of it and i was like oh my gosh i can repurpose that for the garden so that's what i did this is just one of those cheap metal wedding archways so okay so all you literally need is a pair of scissors and some twine string anything i've even used yarn before and that works just fine so all i do is a very simple pattern i'm going to tie one end on and it doesn't matter if you start vertically or horizontally i'm really just doing a very simple crisscross pattern so first i actually will trim off all of this old stuff so this isn't confusing for you guys because this is all from the previous years. It is alive out here. I hear the birds and the bees, everything buzzing around. Spring is coming. Okay. So, my scissors right here. Okay. So we've got our first piece tied on. And I don't even cut it off this. I just leave it on this because it gives me a handle. And I literally just go up to the next cross beam, wrap it around a few times, and then I slowly kind of twist it over a few inches, wrap it around a few times, and then I come back down. And then we repeat. And we keep repeating this pattern. Now, um, if you don't pull it tight enough, it can become loose over time. Um, and then you'll have kind of a saggy trellis, uh, which will still work fine. It's just not as aesthetically pleasing to see it kind of sagging down there under the weight. Um, to prevent this in the past, like if it's a really heavy plant, um, this is a lot of extra time, but I will actually knot and cut each string so this will be one string this will be one string so that they're not dependent on each other so that if there is a weak link in the chain then it doesn't affect everything but for the most part i just do this because it's quick it's easy there is a lot to do in the garden so anywhere that we can save time is optimal now we reach the point where we have all of our strings. 
Now you have two options. You can tie this off like this to a knot and cut this and then begin going across back and forth. Or I'm just going to wrap it around the side and continue on. I'm not even going to cut it. So that sun is bright. Okay. <laughs> and now this is where the pattern comes in. So we're going to go in one string and around and pull. So we have that right there, that cross. And then we're gonna go in and around and pull. In and around and pull. And we're just gonna keep going all the way across. And then go to our edge, wrap a few times around, just like we did for the top and bottom. And then go down a little bit, swirl it down the pole. Wrap around a few times and start our next row. And before you know it, you're going to have a whole bunch of little squares. And you can make these any size you want. I'm making these kind of close together because I am going to be planting, actually I already did plant, they're actually at my feet, um, some sweet peas, some snow peas, some vining snow peas. And they are very delicate peas like delicate things to hang on to so I wanted to make this nice and close together um, you'll see I'll show you guys in a minute I have another example of one that I did for string beans and that one is way more separated much much bigger squares because green beans are pretty thick climbers so they they don't need as much close together to grab onto Peas have a tendency to get kind of knotted if there's too much like free space for them to go around like down here they may get entwined in each other and I mean it won't necessarily hurt them it'll just be kind of a knotted kind of a mess and we want to keep things looking neat and tidy because it's just pretty so it won't harm the production if they're all knotted but it just doesn't look as cute so make sure I don't step on my peas down there. Okay, so I am done. And I'm literally just going to tie this in a knot. And there we go. That's it. That's literally that easy. And then you would just start on your next sections and just keep going until it's all done. You can string the entire thing, technically, with one piece of string. Um, but like I said, if it becomes loose, then your entire structure becomes loose. And that might not be, you know, what you want. But if you do each section, like I'll do each one of these squares individually, if one has an issue, I can just replace that square instead of having to redo the whole thing. So um, let's go look at some examples of some other styles that I have done. Okay, so this is another pea trellis. And it's actually using that same technique that I just used. But because it is on a teepee, it kind of has this more like spider webby look because the little squares are getting smaller and smaller and skinnier as they go up. So, but the same exact concept, the same way I weave that. And as you can see, my peas are already starting to climb up there. So they are getting going. And this is the beginning of a project that I'm working on that I'm not yet done with. Um, but just to show you guys an example, um, these strings just are going straight down. If you have anything like a green bean would grow fine on this, um, it may need a little more support, like if you want it to be more fully covered and not so wild, but just doing a straight string down like this would be fine for anything. Even um, tomatoes, you could go up here and string along. But actually what this, the finale of this is going to look like, and I'm going to show you guys in a whole video how I built this. I'm pretty excited about this little design I'm doing here. Um, but I did, just did something kind of, kind of fancy looking, I guess. It's diamonds essentially. So, and all I did for this was I kind of just went up, down triangles, all the way down triangles. And then I did triangles in the opposite direction to connect them so it looked like a diamond and then I did a string straight through the middle so that was it so it's really simple but it looks kind of pretty and 
because of the way this is shaped, the green beans are gonna kinda wanna go along it. So it's gonna give this a different look as the vines are growing than anywhere else that I have, just the crisscross ones. This does take more time though and a lot more string. So it depends, you know, what kind of look you're going for and how much time you have. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. It really is like literally that easy, that quick. There's nothing fancy about it. Um, actually, I have an example right here of some loose ones. So what happened with there is I built this around my hammock and but the hammock was not fully together and so when I put the hammock together inside of this I knocked one of the beams and then the string became loose so that is a great example of why you want to probably section off your strings and not do it in one continuous string because this was literally one continuous string for this whole thing so now I have that weak point which I can just pull the string and tighten it but if you don't want to have to worry about having that issue I would section them off um, it doesn't take that much more time so what are some things that we probably don't want to put on string trellises I would say probably anything that's really heavy um, maybe cucumbers or pumpkins any melons things like that if you got a heavier duty string probably would work I've seen people do that but I would just be concerned about um, it snapping under the weight or something. So for anything that's like really heavy, I prefer to use like sticks, bamboo, something that has a little more um, strength to it. So, but for any of your delicate things, your peas, your beans, your flowers, anything like that, it works perfectly fine. So alrighty, that's it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye, happy gardening.